beloved, welcome, hallelujah, to this conference where we are praising the Lord Jesus, where we are remembering what he did for us on the cross, hallelujah. You did well to come. So many times we are forgetting what Jesus did. But today, this weekend, again, will bring unto remembrance everything the Lord did for us. Hallelujah. He did so good. We're going to share it and we'll leave it. And if we try to forget it, we'll bring it back what the Lord Jesus did on the cross. Beloved, we are reading, we are in the book of Exodus, chapter 12, verse 1 to 14, and then we'll read verse 29 to 30, Exodus 12, 1 to 14, then we're going to read 29 to 30. After that, we will read again Mark chapter 15, verse 33 to 39. It's quite a long, small reading. We need it to understand what we want to talk about. I am waiting for you to be ready. Yes, we are reading to get I'm reading, you are following if what I'm reading is true, exactly the word of God. The Bible says I'm reading in the name of Jesus. The Lord said Exodus chapter twelve, verse one to fourteen. The Lord said to Moses and Aaron in Egypt, This month is to be for you the first month. The first month of your year, tell the whole community of Israel that on the tenth day of this month, each man is to take a lamp for his family, one for each household. If any household is too small for a whole lamp, they must share one with their nearest neighbor. Having taken it to account the number of people there, there are. You are to determine the amount of lamp needed in accordance with what each person will eat. The animals you choose must be year old, males without defect. And you may take them from the sheep or the goats. Take care of them until the 14th day of the month, when all the members of the commun community of Israel must gather, all the community of Israel, sorry, must slaughter them at twilight. Then they are to take some of the blood and put it on the side and tops of the door frames of the houses where they eat the lamb. That same night, they are to eat the meat roasted over the fire along with bitter herbs and bread made without yeast. I'm jumping to verse 29. At midnight, the Lord struck down all the firstborn in Egypt from the firstborn of Pharaoh born of the prisoner sorry from the firstborn of pharaoh who sat on the throne to the firstborn of the prisoner who was in the dungeon and the firstborn of all the livestock as well pharaoh and all his officials and all the egyptians got up during the night and there was loud welling in egypt for there was not a house without someone dead. We are quickly going in the book of Mark. Chapter 15. 
Are we ready? Mark chapter 15, verse 33 to 39. I am reading in the name of Jesus. The Bible says, Mark 15, 33 to 39. At noon, darkness came over the whole land until three in the afternoon. And at three in the afternoon, Jesus cried out in a loud voice, Eloi, Eloi, lema sabktani, which means, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? When some of those standing near heard this, they said, listen, he's calling Elijah. Someone ran, filled a sponge with wine vinegar, put it on a staff and offered it to Jesus to drink. Now leave him alone. Let's see if Elijah comes to take him down, he said. With a loud cry, Jesus breathed his last. The curtain of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom. And when the centurion who stood there in front of Jesus saw how he died, he said, surely this man was the son of God. You may be seated, Holy Spirit. We thank you. We glorify you. Use us because you are the mentor. You are God. And us, we are vessels unto your hands. We bless you in the name of Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen, amen. As we said, we are in the weekend of Easter. We are celebrating and we read the two scriptures or texts. If I can say, we were in the book of Exodus and the book of Mark. And we saw what happened. If we could give a small theme or a theme about this, we're going to say the mystery of the cross. Hallelujah. Beloved, you know, if Pharaoh knew what was waiting for him after the 10th plague, he will not keep the children of Israel till the 10 plagues. If he knew that after that, he will lose all the firstborns, he will not. Hallelujah. This is why we are calling it mystery. He didn't know. If the devil knew what will happen by crucifying our Lord and Savior, he will not crucify him. Because he will be saying, I will be in troubles. But he didn't know. It's what we want to talk a bit today again to bring into our remembrance what happened that day. Beloved, you know, when we read in the book of Exodus, we saw the story of Moses who went to take out the children of Israel out of Egypt. That was a recommendation coming from the Lord God Almighty. He said to him, go and set them free. But you know, when you grew at that place and people of the place knows you, now it's you who has to come to save them. It never be easy. Hallelujah. We saw it with Moses. The children of Israel, uh, yes, because they knew God, I think they understood. But the people of Egypt, they were like, look at this one. A wanted man. He was here. We wanted to kill him because he killed an Egyptian. Now he's coming. He's telling us that the Lord has sent me. This is a joke or what? Same thing with our Lord Jesus. I think the people in his street were asking, is he not the son of Mary? Hallelujah. And Joseph, now you are telling us that he's God. You see, they, even when you read the story in the book of Mark, Luke, hallelujah, Matthew, John, you will see, they say it's blasphemy. This man is calling himself the son of God, but we saw him how he was born. Isn't it the son of Mary? They didn't believe. 
if the men who grew up with him didn't believe easily, and the devil, he could not. Hallelujah. And here comes Moses went to them and he told them that the Lord God has sent him. He, he went especially to uh, Pharaoh, who was the king. He said, the Lord has sent me to tell you to set them free. I love the answer of Pharaoh. He doesn't know the God. He doesn't know the man who sent you. I will not take them free. And they start demonstrating. We all know the story. What happened? First plague. Water changed into blood. The magician also did it. They see nothing new they can do. It's exactly the same things. When Moses does, they will do. When Moses do, does this, they will do. And I think for them it was a joke. Hallelujah. They say, ah, this Moses, everything is doing. Our magicians also can do that. There is nothing special with him. We don't care. We will not let them go. Pharaoh say, I will not I will not let these people go. Instead, give them more work to do because they are distracted because they are free. This is why they are thinking about going. But beloved, it was true what Moses was saying. But one something happened. The thing that happened was the power of the blood. And the Lord said to Moses, tell them, that is in the book of Exodus chapter 12, to keep a lamp without defect, a year old male. Hallelujah. I want us to bring it together. Here, the Lord is telling them to bring a lamb because they have to shed blood. And here they say a year old male. And the other side in the book of Mark, we are seeing Jesus, our Lord, who is a year old male. Hallelujah. Who has to go on the cross to die. And he said to them, you will eat it. In the book of Exodus, you will kill the lamb. He gave them all the instructions that was so necessary for them. You have to obey to respect it. And you will eat it like this. Those who are not many, they have to mix together so that they eat and you have to finish it. At the other side, in the New Testament, there we have our Lord Jesus. He said, when you go on top, he said to the disciple, go. Get prepared the Passover. Today I have to take the Passover with you. And they did everything knowing, as we used to sing, a man born to die, he knew that my life doesn't belong to me. I have to die. But why do I want to talk about the mystery of the cross? Because after what happened, in the book of Exodus, we saw what happened. All the firstborn of Egypt passed away. This is why I call it mystery. You know, mystery is something you cannot understand. They didn't understand when they, maybe they were seeing them crossing to go to their town. They didn't know. I, I think they were surprised because I think there were so many million and Every household supposed to have a lamb. For sure, the people of Egypt were laughing. Today, the whole Israel will eat lamb. What is happening here? They didn't know because only God knew what he wanted to do. And they started getting ready. And the Lord said, when it will be time, you have to kill, you have to eat. You have to take the blood to put on the doorpost. But today we are not talking about that. Today we are talking about the sacrifice. Here Jesus said to the disciple, you go, prepare the table, do everything ready. But bring the bread, bring the wine, because I have to take the last supper with you. 
this side also, the devil and his accolades didn't know. The other side also, Pharaoh and his people didn't know what will happen. But they just obey. And they went. They did exactly Moses told the children of Israel and they did it. When they did it, they killed the lamb. They did the sacrifice. They eat what they had to eat with bitter herbs. But one thing I love about it in the story, when you continue because I cut it short, the Lord said to them, make sure you eat bread without yeast. Hallelujah. You eat it like that. We will get there. And the other side also, we all know the story, the disciples went to make it ready and it was exactly bread why because of the passover for sure i think also the people thought it was, it is always like this jesus is just having one and maybe the people who knew jesus they say ah this master and his disciple they used to do things like this but this time that time it was not the same it was about himself to die in exodus it was a year old male lamb but in the book of mark it was a year old male man Hallelujah. But the man was not like every man. Even myself. If they said to me to go crucify myself to go to heaven. I'm telling you, you will find me at the same place. I will promise you, go switch off the light. I will do it. But when we come the morning, I will greet you. I will say good morning. My own life to die for it. To go to heaven. I will promise you I will do it. Don't worry. Switch off the light. I know I love my, my life. I will do it later. But the morning when you will open the door. Be strong because I will greet you. If you thought that I passed away then I came back. It means I will not kill myself for myself. Even though I love myself. But let's go and see the story what happened. The Lord Jesus had the last supper with them. And we, let me tell you what happened. After that, Judah came because he was about the, to fulfill the promise because it was like that. He came to die. He didn't come to live forever. Hallelujah. As it's this verse with long life, you shall be satisfied. Hallelujah. I, will, I, God, will satisfy you. But Jesus came knowing that not long life. I have to die for them. But he was waiting. He was waiting as a lamb of God to be old. You know, he could be born and die. Hallelujah. But it will not be the same. They will say the lamb that the Lord God told us there was a year old male. But the lamb you are killing now, it's a baby lamb. He waited. He waited. And it came to pass that Jesus went through everything that he went through. Ponce Pilate said, I didn't find any mistake in the man. But if you don't find any mistake as a judge, what should you do to release the man? The devil didn't know. They didn't find any mistake, but they, we have, they have to kill him. Something. This is why so many times I thank the Lord I was not in that time because maybe I will be with them. Following them, you know the crowd. Hey, Jesus, hey, Bomai, hey, kill him, kill him. You know. Thank God. I was not with them because they cried. When it was time to choose, Pilate said, Pilate say, I didn't find anything wrong with the man. Go find a solution. You know what they put in his head as a title? This one was a thief. He deserved this one at the right was a thief. But him was the king. Because they didn't find. 
enemy stick on him. But they didn't know that he was fulfilling the promise that we have to share this evening. Beloved, if they knew, if they knew, but good news, I want to tell you, you cannot shortcut the plan of God. If God has planned something, hallelujah, day, night, rain, snow, it shall come to pass. And through Judah, who presented the Lord, who said to them, the one I will kiss, it's him. He sold the Lord, but the man was quiet. Here again, we go. If it was me, the way I will explain to them, you, you want to arrest me? What did I do? You, you forget. I healed your child. You, you forget. When you, you, you didn't have the food, I gave you. But the man was quiet because he knew. He was, I think, the only one to know the, to know the mystery that was coming after. He was going, not explaining not saying anything. We will go there. You will see in the book of Isaiah 53. They say he was like the man that they reject. You know when they reject you. Hallelujah. He didn't explain to them. Don't you know I am the son of God. There in Exodus also. Moses didn't explain to them. Don't you know it's God. When the children of Israel were saying. Moses you came to kill us. Look the labor is now too hard. He was quiet. He knew to whom he believed. But. We could, you, could, you can tell me why we didn't stop with the lamb. The lamb was not enough. Because the blood of the lamb was covering only the sin. Hallelujah. It means God could take, you know when you cover something, eh? when you have a pot, especially mother, you are cooking. It means when you take off, you take the lid, you can see the inside. The Lord noticed that one is not perfect. But the only one the devil knew, it was that one. Hallelujah. They used to bring the lamb. But he didn't know that the Lord was fulfilling something great in the man called Jesus. He didn't explain to them. I want to explain myself. It's me, Jesus. It's me, the Savior. It's me. As I tell you, I praise God. I am born in this time. Because in that time, I don't know. The Lord is amazing. He didn't explain to them. And they brought him. They brought him. You know what they did to him. They beat him. They did wrong to Jesus. A crown of thorn. You know, about everything they did to Jesus, the only thing I don't like to think is the crown. Especially the day they explained to me that this crown was having thorn all over. When he moved, it entered. When he moved, it entered. This is why he was bleeding. But he didn't explain to themselves. Here comes the verse that you read in the book of Mark. Verse 33, he asked God, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Because the body was in pain. He thought that it was finished for him. But he was God. But at that time as a man, he felt the pain. But he was fulfilling what we want to talk this evening. If the devil knew the mystery after the cross, he will not crucify the Lord Jesus. He wouldn't, he wouldn't, he wouldn't, he wouldn't. If the devil knew that after crucifying Jesus, I will receive favor to enter the house of God the way I want, to talk to the living God the way I want, to do things as a son of God, the devil would not, he would not crucify Jesus. He would not. But he didn't see that. He didn't know the mystery behind the cross, he didn't. 
all they wanted was to kill him because they were not happy with everything he was doing. But everything he was doing, he was doing it to save you and me. Beloved, Jesus on the cross came to save us. Just when they killed Jesus, we enter the stage of grace. Hallelujah. The crucifixion of Jesus brought to us a free access to the grace of God. I can talk to God the way I want. I can be exempted of things, hallelujah, just because of the cross. Just because of the cross of Jesus. Let us read in the book of Ephesians chapter 2 verse 8 to 9. Then we will understand what the cross brought to us. What the crucifixion of Jesus. I am there. I'm waiting for you to be there too. Ephesians 2, 8 to 9. I'm reading in the name of Jesus. The Bible says, For it is by grace. Hallelujah. For it is by what? Yesterday, grace was no day. In the time of Moses, you do wrong, we kill you. Hallelujah. You still, we kill you. You don't obey, we kill you. Their stoning, it was something small. They bring you in front, sometimes they stone you. You have leprosy, you go out, they stone you. They didn't know, they didn't know. The people who were crucifying Jesus they didn't know what will happen to us. For it is by grace you have been saved through faith. And this is not from yourselves. It is the gift of God, not by works, so that no one can boast. Imagine if it was not that. This one will say, do you know me? We have, my father is a farmer. We have lambs. When I do wrong, I just go. I take. And you and I, that's, we don't have parents who are farmers. We'll be begging them, hallelujah, following them, crawling, please give me one lamb. Please give me one lamb. I have to kill because I did wrong. The devil didn't know. He didn't know. But he did good. Hallelujah. He did good to crucify the Lord so that freely I can enter. Look now I am saved. Does it cost a lot? No. I just have to say thank you Lord. Beloved, imagine if it was not by grace. Try to think. Let us think together. If the cross of Jesus didn't bring grace, if it was about money, let us just say they say only two million. Is it okay? Two million is too high. Let us go to 500. <laughs> there are people who will be praying for the 500,000, but it's by grace. Just have faith. Lord Jesus, I love you. I receive you as my Lord and Savior. Here is my heart, my life. I want to follow you to serve you. Done deal. Done deal. Hallelujah. You don't come tell me you, you from which family are you? Who is your father? You are poor. You are so smart. You are this. Oh, 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 let us not boast about it. Let us boast about what Jesus did at the cross. This is why I called it the mystery of the cross. You know, that day in heaven, you will see some, even you, you are here. Yes, I'm here. <laughs> it's me. 
It's me. I'm here. I'm serving the Lord. Oh, you, you are here. Beloved, if it was not for Jesus, for the cross, let's go back to the lamb. And it was, you see, you bring the lamb. You see, then you will finish the lambs in the farm. Because how many times you have to sin, but now it's free. No one sometimes sees you. Lord, I know I did wrong for thee. It's a mystery. One of them is the grace. The grace. We have been saved by grace. Isn't it amazing? Someone took our place, hallelujah, and he bore everything, and here we are. If they knew, they will not crucify Jesus. Thank God they didn't know the plan of God. Thank God. We thank God. You know, another thing that the cross brought to us, reconciliation. We have been reconciled with God. Hallelujah. You remember when Adam sinned. Hallelujah. We went far from God. He was looking. He was hiding himself. Adam, I see, I did wrong. And you know the first thing Adam did, it was what? The woman that you put next to me. He didn't even recognize that he did wrong. He didn't recognize. He didn't say, I did wrong. But the one who didn't do wrong, he went for us. He wanted us to bring us, to take us back to God. He didn't want us to explain to him, you know, you and I, the way we can explain to God, God, you know. God, I want to, you know. No, God, it was not like that. You, he's God. He knows our heart. But we can try to explain him. Ah, God, no, this is you. God, I want to tell you what I was thinking. But it's God. But Jesus didn't do that. Let us quickly go in the book of Romans. And we'll see Romans chapter 5, verse 10. We will see what the cross did for us. Beloved, I want to tell us that Jesus dying at the cross is powerful. Even powerful is not enough as word. Powerful is little. Now we are saved by grace. No lamb. No explanation. No stoning. Beloved, if they have to stone, sometimes you will be stoning yourself before people stone you. They will just find you. You just put it there and you stand. One, two, three. Poof. And people will understand what you did. Hey, this one. But Jesus are we there? The Bible says, For if while we were God's enemies, we were what? God's enemies. We were reconciled to him through the death of his son. How much more, having been reconciled, shall we be saved through his life? We are back with God. We are one with God. Hallelujah. If we are here because we are one with God. Because of the cross. Because of the cross. Thank you Holy Spirit. I wanted to share this. But I didn't um, put the verse for it. But I think it's Exodus 12 still. You will see where... Uh, Moses is telling Pharaoh, let the people of God, let my people go. To do what? To worship God. The cross of Jesus brought us next to God to worship him. You, we could not. We could not tell God, God, I love you. How can you love God? You are God's enemies. How can you tell God the good things? Hallelujah. We could not go to God. You know, worshiping God is telling God who he is. We could not go to God and tell God who he is. To tell him you are the father. You are the creator. He will not listen to us. Beloved, Jesus did amazing things on the cross. 
we are reconciled to worship the Lord. We are back to God. And God now is looking at us. He's calling us son. Isn't it amazing? You know when a father calls you by your name and when a father calls you son, let the man say, how do you feel? Son? But when they call you by your name, it's good. It's your name. But when they call you son, Jesus has brought us back into our position of son. The Lord is calling me son. Father, this is the good answer when a father calls a son. You know, when a father says, this is my son, it means... But now God is saying that for us because of Jesus. Because of his death. Isn't it amazing? Jesus was not explaining himself. I would like even once him to explain to them that I'm God. I didn't do wrong. It was a mystery. Go in the book of Isaiah 53. There we can see. He was like a lamb. They were taking him to the butcher. He was not explaining. He was like he was rejected by men. Yo, Mary. How she was crying. But the man was saving us. This is why I say to you, the devil didn't know. By crucifying him, we have, he will be in trouble. Because look how many Jesus he is now. Count yourself. Let us count. How many are we? He's in trouble. I don't know where. Maybe, I don't know, 100 meters. There are many Jesus also there. Because there are people who, has be, who have believed in Jesus. And Jesus is in them. And the Lord is calling them son. This is why the devil doesn't like us. You, you ask yourself why he doesn't like you. You are a son. God calls you son. And if he was passing him devil, they are not even calling him a son. He has reconciled us to God. Another thing, the cross, the Jesus we are celebrating today did. Another mystery that they didn't know, it was the forgiveness. Because for the devil, we were at the same place, wrong like him. Hallelujah. We did, you, 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 the rest of Adam, you ate the apple. Oh, you are wrong. Me also, I rebelled myself against God. We are on the same page. You know, in a house... Or oh, at school, when you didn't do what you're supposed to do, you want everyone to do not do also. Because when you are many, the punishment will be for everybody. And you will be oh, relieved because all of us has done wrong. The crowd was saying, crucify him. Because for them, there were many, they were right. Hallelujah. And Jesus being alone was wrong. No, it was not like that. It was the way around. Jesus was right. He was dying for us. And he brought forgiveness. You know, I love Jesus. Today people will say, I love the man. Hallelujah. I love the man. I love Jesus. You know, while he was dying at the cross where he was, he was forgiving people. Lord, Father, forgive them. They don't know what they are doing. And the forgiveness that Jesus has brought to us is exactly like the cross. It's like this toward the Father and it's like this toward each other. Let us read Ephesians chapter 4 verse 32. Chapter 4.
verse 32. The Bible says, be kind and compassionate to one another, forgiving each other. Did it stop there? No. Forgiving each other, how? Just as in Christ, God forgave you. Just as in Christ, God forgave us. The cross has brought forgiveness. The crucifixion of Jesus brought forgiveness. The Lord now is looking to us, as I said to you earlier, and he is calling us son. He is calling us beloved. He is calling us lovely. He's, all these kind words are not even enough to describe the world. The way God loves us now. But if he didn't. If he didn't. If he didn't die. Would not be here. Me I love everything. But the first one. The grace of God is my favorite. Hallelujah coming to favor it means i could not be counted in on but the cross of jesus what he did put me fit me in fit is the nice word hallelujah you know so when you are sitting or in a bus or somewhere because now it's covid social distancing but you know when you are in maybe in an auditorium you don't have a lot of space. You will ask your neighbor, fit me in. To push. It means you are not there. In the, we are not there. Hallelujah. Maybe the Jews, I don't know. Maybe they, we were not there. But the cross, what Jesus did, took me where I was, fit me next to God, and the Lord God knows me and loves me. I was not counted. I was not counted. And so many times we try to forget what he did. Beloved, it's a mystery. The people who were saying, kill him, crucify him, kill him, he's hung, kill him. You know, they chose even Barabbas the thief. You know, the thief that you know, when he enters your house, you will not survive. But you say, I'm choosing him over Jesus. When he enters your house, you will not. But Jesus was not explaining. Let us read it in the book of Isaiah. I love the verse, the chapter 53. Are you there? Isaiah 53. I want, it, I want to bring it up also in your memory, in your remembrance today. If you forgot, I want to remind you what the Lord did. The Bible says, Who has believed our, our message? And to whom has the arm of the Lord been revealed? He grew up before him like a tender shoot and like a root out of dry ground. He had no beauty or majesty to attract us to him. Nothing in his appearance that we should desire him. He was despised and rejected by mankind. A man of suffering and familiar with pain. Like one from whom people hide their faces, he was despised and we held him in low esteem. In low esteem. We didn't consider him. I'm reading the NIV because I'm seeing people looking there, looking at what I'm reading. If it's not the same, I am reading NIV version. Surely, verse 4, he took up our pain and bore 
I was, and bore our suffering, yet we consider him by God, punished by God, stricken by him and afflicted. You see, for us, the Lord has punished him. If he is the son of God, the Lord could not leave him. No, God didn't punish him. But the handsome men, obedient to the father, did what the father wanted him to do, to reconcile us, to have us back. And that time, the Passover, they were eating bread and they were drinking wine. But now, this time, he ate also like that he drank. But what we are doing now, when it's our time of the heavenly meal, we are doing one thing we want to see that he did. You know, when you are reading, I was reading my Bible, I was looking for these verses. And we're going to share it about what happened at the cross. You know, they said to us, do you remember, I think, I spoke, I read it, verse 3, Exodus 12. The last two sentences, the Bible says, the lamb shall be year old man without defect. Did you see that? And we'll see what Jesus did for us to be saved. Nas, uh, then you will understand when you are eating the holy meal, you will not be all over. You will not say ah, again this Sunday. No. I want you to understand now what the cross, what the crucifixion brought to us. Year old men without defect. Let us quickly go in the book of John chapter 19 verse 33. We'll see one of the mystery. Am there. The Bible says, but when they came to Jesus and found that he was already dead, they did not break his legs. They did not do what? Break his legs. Beloved, it's for this promise. Let's go in the book of Psalm 34 verse 20. You will understand that now we have the perfect lamb in Jesus. And you will see what happened. I'm there. Are you there? Let us read verse 20. The Bible says, He protects all his bones. Not one of them will be broken. Because the Lamb of God is supposed to be without defect. And Jesus at the cross really fulfilled every promise of God. The one mystery remaining again. I wanted us to share again this evening because we have many, but the one remaining for this evening, you know it's what? It is that by his stripes we have been healed. And the lamb didn't supposed to have any defect. And when they went so that they break his legs, so that you be tired, you know, pastor used to explain, to explain it well to us as a medical doctor. Because 
he was still suffocating and breathing. He was taking long. But when you break the legs, he will die. Then when he'll go, it's okay. But when the soldiers who are supposed to break his leg, to break his legs, when they are hurt, they say, don't touch the man is dead. And for them, they start again laughing. If he is God, he died. How come? If he's gone, he died. Beloved, they didn't touch the master. Because you will tell me it was only by the stripes we supposed to be healed. It was not by the bones. Every word of God is true. And the bones were not broken. It means we have complete healing now. When we are taking, we are eating the Holy Communion. We know that no bones of the master were broken. It means he is the perfect lamb that I never seen. Because that lamb could not know me. He could not talk. The lamb of the time of Moses was really a lamb. But this one is a true lamb. You know, if one bone of the Lord was broken, they will tell you, you are sick because your healing is in the part of that bone. This is why you are sick. But no, I cannot. I cannot. Because by his stripes, I am healed. It's only about the stripes. It's not about the bones. Because the Lord doesn't contradict himself. He said the lamb supposed to be here old man without defects. And here also Jesus our Lord is a year old man without defects. They found him. They say the man is already dead. He is already dead. We don't have to touch. We don't have to break. Beloved, I am here to tell you the mystery of the cross. There is a mystery there. The grace that we are talking about came from there. Hallelujah. Let no one bull you, tell you I am the one who is the most, the high favored by God. Say, where is it coming from that grace you are talking a lot? Ah, from Jesus Christ. It means I have it also. They didn't know. They didn't know. The word of God is true. The word of God is true. It is really, really true. And you know, another mystery that they didn't know. I want to talk again about this evening. It is the church. It is you and I. The devil and his acolyte, they didn't know acolyte, they didn't know that by killing Jesus, the church will be born. They didn't know. They didn't know. They don't even read history. When they came out after the Passover, a church was born in the desert. Hallelujah. A church started there. They started worshiping the Lord. It's exactly what happened with our Lord Jesus. Peter was there. All of them, they were there. But when the Lord passed on, and when the Lord came back to life, the church started. The church started. Because the Lord God is amazing. The Lord knew that I am dying to give birth to something. Hallelujah. Jesus was laboring so strong because he knew I am giving birth to the church. But the people who was killing Jesus, they didn't know about that.
everything was there. When Moses and the people of Israel were going, the lamp, that night, it was about the blood. Hallelujah. And then, where they were crossing, it was water. Hallelujah. They were crossing blood and water to give, uh, to make, the, the, at that time, to make them going worshiping God. When they were pacing, killing our Lord Jesus, blood, water came out to give birth to the church. Isn't it amazing? But they didn't know. They didn't know. They didn't know. They were so in bad mood. I don't know what. They wanted only to see Jesus being crucified. But they didn't know what they were doing. Beloved, the mystery of the cross brought alive you and I today. This is why the devil didn't know we can come now from different nations to meet somewhere and to call ourselves that the church of the living God. He is in trouble. This is, you know, you cannot control, even in a class, when the, 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 the class is too huge. When the teacher goes here, this one, maybe la they are laughing. When she will turn or he will turn, this one, they are saying something. When he go, and now he is in trouble because church all over. Churches all over the world. He, he didn't know. He didn't know. He didn't understand. Easter weekend, how many are we celebrating it? And the, another mystery that he didn't know. He didn't know. When the Lord passed on, he said, you know, you are killing someone, the man is talking like this. You must be scared. When someone is dying, he has to be quiet. But this man is dying. He's saving people. This man is dying. They are asking him, are you the son of God? He's answering them. You have said it yourself. But which kind of man they are killing him is talking like this and he's saying it is finished. Jesus was not quiet. The things he was saying, he knew it. And last, he brought to us the provision. He brought to us the provision. I don't know what I have to talk concerning the provision, but provision in everything. And while, while I was preparing, the Holy Spirit dropped in my mind the groceries. You know, mothers, when they go do groceries, they are not afraid of the mouth. Hallelujah. They know that there is food. What Jesus did at the cross, he brought us the provision. And when we are talking about provision, it's provision of anything you want. You just want something, desire something, and go take. You just desire something, and go take. You just desire water, and go put your cup, drink. You just desire food, and go take it. You just desire healing. The Lord has done it all. The devil didn't know the church will come out of the thing and he didn't know the provision. Someone to tell you it is finished. It means I've done it all. What do we do when we are writing exams? When you know all the answers, you are done. You are even waving eh? the people who are writing. I'm going out. Done. Jesus said, it is finished. Done. There is a provision. 
Beloved, I want to tell someone what the Lord did at the cross brought us next to God and there is a provision next to God. There are provisions next to God. You just tell me what you want and you will have it. You will tap. You will take. You will get in. There is provision. Do you want what? Healing. Provision is there. When your deep freezer is full of things, are you afraid of the mouth? Are you afraid of guests? Are you afraid to go visit sick people, those who they need it? Why? Because you have the provision. But it's the same. It's the same in Jesus. We have the provision. Why are we crying? The provision is there. He said, it is finished. Healing is there. You name it, me, I will say is there. Me, I say breakthrough is there. Solution is there. Answers, they are there. Marriage, there. Going from glory to glory, glory is there. Everything we want, the Lord has done it. When he says it is finished, you know, we don't have a God who just talks for the sake of talking. Whoever God, when he talks, he means it. Hallelujah. We are not having a God who will say, oh, I can, but he can't. No, my God is capable. My God is able. My God, before he talks, he means it. When he says it's finished, it's finished. The provision is there. Beloved, I'm here to tell someone it's a mystery. This is why you ask yourself so many times why the devil doesn't like me. The devil has to love you. Someone who has the provision. And him being hungry forever. You, you have it. You just go in the house. You just open. You just open the fridge. You take. You don't ask. Someone who knows that the provision is there doesn't ask, do you have money? Are you, you know kids, they don't ask is it for whom they eat. Then you say, it was not ours. It's like that we have to behave with Jesus. The provision is there. You just take. You just take. I just take. We just take. Because he has done it all. He did it on the cross. I cannot lack. I cannot be barren. I cannot be poor. I cannot cry. I cannot be sick. Never. The provision is there. This is why I called it the mystery. The devil didn't know that what I'm doing, it's a mystery behind. But you know, the way he is, he's supposed to do it for you and I to be here. He did well to do it for you and I to celebrate Jesus. The provision of everything is there. The provision of everything. I am here to tell someone, we are serving a living God. We are serving a living God. He has reconciled us to God. We are no longer far to God. We are close. And Father is calling. Sometimes you call him Father. You will feel it, how nice it is. And he will call it, he will call you Son. Son belongs only to the Son. He doesn't belong to others. Beloved, we have been saved by grace. As I say in the beginning, if it was not by the grace of God, only the farmers will win. But after finishing all the lambs, that's the grace of God. The grace of God. No one can talk to us. The favor, God is racing with us. God is with us. It means himself is away ahead. I'm here to tell someone you have the provision. 
you have the provision. And when the provision is there, nothing to do. The church is born. They didn't know. The devil is in trouble. How many Christians? And you know, he cannot see everywhere. It means you have to leave this one in Fandabel in South Africa to go look for the one in Thailand. When he will come back, as we are no longer here, we are, you know, he is in trouble now because of what Jesus did. At that time, they just thought it's a law. The Lord has given to Moses the law. To, even that time, you know, after the crossing over, the tabernacle started. They started worshiping, going. They will enter only once a year, high praise. But they made something because the Lord's heart wanted to be restored. He wanted us to go back to him. And he was looking for the perfect one. I love God. When you don't know his plans, you are in trouble. His plans was like, the lamb is not enough. With the blood of the lamb, the sin, the sin is covered. It means when I take out, I take off the lid, I'm seeing, I'm again made. You know what the blood of Jesus did? He raised it. You look for the sin. Who did you write here? It's no more. It's no more. It's no more. You are ju you just be quick to say, God, forgive me in the name of Jesus. It's no more. Because of Jesus, the Lord understood that the blood of the Lamb is not enough. The blood of the lamb, when I take out, when I take off the lid, I'm seeing what this one see in, did in 30 years, what did one did in 60, and the God Almighty was mad again. He was like these people, but with the blood of Jesus. And the Lord said, Your sin, I will remember. Your sin I will remember no more because of Jesus, the mystery of the cross. Let no one comes to you and to me. Tell me, you know that sin that you did, that which sin are you talking about? I did it, me. The Lord is remembering it no more. And how come you remember because you are a man? And there is provision. Whenever you have your provision, you are happy. Because you have just to open and take. Where, where, when you have your provision of apple, can you start praying for apple? You are just taking apple in the mouth and you are so happy. Because it's there. It's exactly what is happening. The provision of everything we want. It's there. The Lord has done it. You just go take. The point is we don't want to go and take it. The Lord's provision is there. He's God. He cried. He felt in his body like leaving us. But he was so obedient that he said, mm -mm. Father, have you forsaken me? I remember in Gethsemane because I was reading it. He went to pray because he was terrified. He was like, yo, it's too heavy. But he said, nevertheless, not my will but yours. Because he knew how many, he was the only son of God. How many brothers does he have now? He has brothers in Japan. He has brother in Europe. He has brother in Africa, in Asia. In Am Isn't it amazing? And you know, one thing before I close, I want us to talk about it. It came to me just now. The cross of Jesus has brought to us, has brought to us adoption. The Lord ha God has adopted us. And you know me, I love the adoption of God. We are now in the same rank with Jesus. 
You know, today when you adopted someone, a child, you want everyone to know this one is adopted one. Hallelujah. But it's not like that with God. Hallelujah. The adoption is perfect. Look, we are praying in the name of Jesus and we have it. Isn't it we are at the same rank with Jesus? The cross has placed us, as I say, the son of God. You are just saying in the name of Jesus. And the kingdom of the, the darkness, they know you. They don't want to mess with you. They don't because they know you will say in the name of Jesus, go. In the name of Jesus, stop. Beloved, he did it all. Everything is provided. He did it all. Don't worry about what you are going through now. And you are asking, and sometimes we have the God to ask Jesus, don't you see? How come you will not see someone who died for you? He sees. He knows. Because he is God. Beloved, the provision is there. Settle, waiting for us. Just let us go, run, take what we want. It's there. He said it's finished. Anything wrong is finished. If it was sickness, it's finished. If it was lies, it's finished. If it was, I don't know. Everything is finished. He has fulfilled it all because he's God. Because he is God. This is why when we came, we danced for him. We did everything. This is why we are worshiping him the, the way we are doing. Because it is him. It's Jesus the man who did it for us. He did it. And we are saved. Me, I told you, I like the first one, the adoption, yes. But I like the grace. You know, the grace of God can do anything for us. They will say, not today. Just say, God, your grace. It's not me, it's you. Help, do, and we will succeed. The Lord is a great God. We'll never, we'll never forget. We'll never forget. Today we didn't even talk about the thorn on his head. We didn't talk about how strong they bet him. But we just talk about the mystery, the benefit of him dying on the cross. I know you. You are praying for me. I am praying for you because of Jesus. Beloved, let us not take what Jesus did for granted. Sometimes you are sleeping, snoring, but one among us here didn't sleep. What are you doing? I'm fasting, I'm praying for the church. And you and I, we want to take Jesus like... We want to take the wake of the cross. You know the way you like to sleep. And you are even saying, sleep. You have my death because I didn't sleep yesterday. But you are sleeping. Someone who didn't know you yesterday. He didn't sleep the whole night. He has your name. He's speaking in tongues. He's naming you. I want him here to break too. The person knows there is provision. Isn't it amazing? Divine protection we have through Jesus. In this time we are in now. If it was not for the cause. If it was not for what Jesus did. Beloved, when people are talking about Jesus, tell them it is because you don't understand the provision. There is no provision for you. This is why you are behaving. But me, I have my provision. Anyone who has the provision, every time he finishes to do everything, he goes back to the provision. Because the provision is your place of rest. It's where you take your food to put in your mouth to eat. It's where you are happy. You say, yo, I have everything I need. Beloved, when you know I have it, when you know I have it, you don't struggle. Let us not forget, I said to you in the beginning, I want us to remember, I want us to remember, to bring in our remembrance 
anything that we are trying to forget. The cross of our Lord Jesus, what he did at the cross, is excellent than anything. We cannot equal it. Because even yourself, if I say they are killing us, they are there waiting for us one by one to die. There are people who look the key. I'm looking the key of this back door because no one will like to die for himself. But Jesus has done it for us. May God bless you.